Welcome to the Second Chance Garage. Okay, I'm sitting at my dining room table. I'm just giving you a quick how you can look at stuff. Glass half full, half empty situation. Okay, so basically, <laughs> I fixed the, the tail lights on my truck. That's one of my one of my videos I put out. And I drove it and during the big storm, and the lights worked great. Had to have it jump started. No big deal, you know. And I had a jump starter box. Okay, I figured out now that I can't count on that jump starter box because it didn't work on that truck. So then the next day, I tried to jump in the car. It was dead. First time it ever let me down. So I tried my jump starter box, didn't work. Okay, so now I know it's got a short in it, so I can't count on it. <clears throat> okay, so this is the thing, though. People are going to go, well, for crying out loud, your truck was broke down, and your truck, and, and, and your car broke down, and all this stuff. Well, it depends on the way you look at it. Because I knew the battery was going bad in the car. But I wasn't worried about it because I had that jumper box of mine that uh, I could just jump start it and I wouldn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to, but now since the truck broke down and I tried to jump start it and then I tried to jump start the car with it, now I figured out that it's got a short, I know that I can't count on it. That's the glass half full part of it. Okay, then the truck broke down in front of the sliding door that I needed to work, where I needed to work on it. Okay, well, it didn't happen at work. You know, it made it all the way home. So, glass half full. All right. Then I was able, the car broke down while I was at home, glass half full. At least it didn't happen when I was at work, which would have sucked, <laughs> you know. I'd have had to jump start it, and then it happened on a Saturday when I wasn't working. So therefore, I had the time to go over there, get the battery, bring it back, and yes, I looked at it and screwed up and thought that the terminals were attached in the front instead of the back. Okay, that was my own fault, but glass, glass being half full, at least I was able to just take two of the tie downs loose, turn the battery around, hook my terminals up, and it worked. So I didn't have to go back to Morton exchange that battery for one that had to turn right the proper terminals and all that stuff i could just use the battery that i'd bought last half full sure it took about an extra 20 minutes 15 20 minutes it's okay no problem you know see it depends on how you look at stuff so anyway uh, and I got the car going again, runs like the top, starts right up, no problems. And I know that it's got a new battery in it. I don't ever have to worry about it not starting in the coldest weather. As long as I keep dumping heat or good gas in it, you know. And uh, another positive thing is that I have a garage for the truck that I can heat up. I've got the wood burning stove and I've got the turbo, the diesel heater and stuff like that to warm up the garage. So I've got all the tools I need to replace it, replace the fuel pump. Always could be worse. It's better than <clears throat> what I used to do when I was a kid, laying out on a driveway and I'd have to shovel the snow out from underneath the, underneath the truck, 
because I had a clutch go out in in one of my 88 four-wheel drive trucks I had. It was a Ford Ranger. Actually, it was the transmission bearing on the front is what went bad. But, I mean, the truck was super old. So I had to drop the transmission, the transfer case all out. But I had pavement to do it on. But it was arctic cold. Every time you'd pick up a branch, it'd stick to your hand. That kind of stuff. Uh, I had the tools to do it. I had a paved driveway to do it on. But man, was it cold. But I had the tools to do it. I had a nice concrete driveway after you shoveled the snow out from underneath it. Off of it and all that stuff. So it could have been worse, you know. I replaced a transmission in a Chevy Nova with two bumper jacks on a gravel gravel road, or yeah, on a gravel driveway at two in the morning. You know, I so you know I have had I've worked in worse conditions. You know, it was a '78 Nova, and the guy needed it to go to work. And I don't know where I wound up getting the transmission from, but we wound up getting the transmission. But by the time we got back, it was like 2 in the morning. The only thing we had to jack it up in the air with was bumper jacks. So we put two bumper jacks under the back end, took, <laughs> took and set it on a set of concrete blocks, which is not recommended because they can crack on you if you ain't careful. <laughs> and then... Blocked the front tires up so it wouldn't roll around and got under there and pulled the transmission out of it and put a transmission in it just by manually shoving it up in there. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I was a lot younger back then. I, you know, and then we just laid cardboard down. So, I mean, no matter what situation you're in, it always can be worse, you know. So it depends on what type of person you are. You want to say, oh, for crying out loud, my truck didn't broke down and now my car broke down too and all this stuff. Well, you can either sit there and cry about it and get nothing done and then have to borrow vehicles to get back and forth to work or you can get off your ass and fix your problem, fix your stuff that you need to fix. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to get the stuff done. And like with me, my truck's old. I showed you it's got holes in it and in the bed and everything else. Well, where I cut that out, I decided that when I get the fuel pump pulled out and fixed, then I'm going to take that square, I'm going to cut it down into little chunks about this big. And then I'm going to MIG weld those patches right over the holes so I got good solid steel there on the bed. And then I'll, that square piece that I cut out for getting access to the fuel pump, I've got another piece of steel that I'll put over the top of that, self-tapping screws all the way around it so I can get to it. And then the piece of wood's going to lay down over the top of it anyway. Nobody will ever see it. Nobody will ever know it's there. And I'll be able to patch a few holes in the bed with the existing steel that I cut out. Now, the, uh, the first piece, a lot of people will be crying about, oh, doggone it, I cut it in the wrong spot, dude. I got a MIG welder. It's nothing to cry about. Just bend it back in shape, tack weld it in there, and then run your beat. You know, I got the tools. It's not a major deal. It's not like it's a brand new truck that's, you know, you know, so, I mean, it's just all how you look at everything. That's the way I see it. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? Well, I'm kind of one of those guys that try to look at everything as a glass half full. Now, I'll be honest with you. When the car didn't start, my first reaction was, boy, you know what? I don't need this right now. And then when I jump started it and got it running, yada, yada. It is what it is. So, anyway, 
I just thought I'd make the video and tell you, no matter how bad it is, don't complain because it can always be worse. It can always get worse. Trust me, been there, done that. Don't want to do it again. So I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day. I appreciate everybody watching. I know this video wasn't one of my typical videos, but I felt that I had to get on here and let people know, don't, don't fall apart, you know, just, you know, hey, it is what it is. You got to just roll with the punches. You know, I, I personally am a religious man, not that you have to be, but I personally am. So I know there's a reason for everything that happens. Good, bad, indifferent, I already know. So if bad things happen to me, it's just because I'm being tested. It's not, it's not a big deal. I've been down this road before, you know, and I'll be down that road again. So, and as far as the truck, did I actually get the fuel pump swapped out yet? No, I haven't. I ended right where I ended that video. I haven't gone any farther than that. It's uh, Sunday. Normally, I don't like to work on Sundays, but in this case, I'm going to go out and work on the garage and uh, maybe try to get it warmed up and see if I can't get that fuel, fuel pump broke loose. I'll eventually get it broke loose and get it swapped out. If don't get it done today, okay. I know what I'll be doing tomorrow after work. You know, it's, it's no big deal. It, it, I'll get it done. So anyway, just hang in there. Everything will be fine. <laughs> you know, just don't, lie, don't let life get you down. Don't let life get you down. Because if you do, they win. That's the way I see it. If somebody, if life ain't going good, somebody's bugging you, giving you crap, whatever, if you get upset about it, they win. They win. You blow them off. And they're all entitled to their opinion. But it don't mean that you have to put, you know, you have to get all upset because their opinion, you know, who cares? Everybody's got their opinion. So, anyway, this is, this is a second chance garage. Just letting you know, hang in there. It'll get better. You know, life's like a roller coaster. One minute you're up, the next minute you're going to go down. So, just hang on tight for the ride. <laughs> this is Uncle Russ at Second Chance Garage. I'm out.